Hello, I'm Matt and welcome to Badger Workshop. So let's get this project finished. First job is to get this motor installed. So I get it put onto the bottom shelf and I'm going to get it attached to the pulley using some linked V-belt. I get this put around both pulleys, see where it links over, mark it, take it apart there and put it back together so I've got it the perfect length. Now I can check if it's aligned properly and move the motor in and out until I've got it in the perfect position. When I'm happy with it, I can then mark out the bolt holes for the motor base. I've been asked a few times why I don't put motors on adjustable bases so I can tighten the belt. Well, I don't see the need with a linked belt as if you want to tighten it, you can just remove one link. I drill some holes on those marks, get some bolts put in place, the motor put on top of them, some washers and nuts on, and then it's installed. So I made the table with the hole for the dust collection underneath and I bought this simple dust port and I had thought about making a wooden chute and having this on the end of it but in my experience it's better to have the hose as close to the um, source of the dust as possible so the simplest solution seems to be drill some holes in this and mount this directly under so that's what I'm going to do. So um that's what I did. This belt's going to need a cover over it, so I work out how wide it needs to be, then get it marked out onto some nice birch plywood. Then it's back to the workshop with it where I can get that cut out on the table saw. I want the top of the guard to be curved, so I just draw around this bowl to get the shape. Then I can take it to the bandsaw and get that cut out. I get two of these cut out exactly the same. With both cut out, I can then hold them together and sand them at the same time on the disc sander. Now one of these is going to have to slide over the pulley, so I mark out a couple of centimetres in all around the outside with some calipers and then go over this mark with a pencil. Then it's back to the bandsaw to get this cut out. These two bits of wood now need joining together, so I cut down some more bits of ply to use as spacers. Then I can get some wood glue applied and get it pushed together and clamped up. So I've got this shape made and I need something to cover it here. So what I've got is some 0.5mm brass. But first, I'm going to swap out the blade in the bandsaw to this 14 TPI one so I can actually cut it. So that's what I did. I get the fence set to the thickness of this guard, then I get a bit of scrap ply and run halfway through. This is because the brass is so thin there's a chance they'd slip under the fence, and with this, it won't. I can then get it cut out and brass cut so nicely with the right blade on the bandsaw. I'm going to screw this onto the guard so I want the holes to be nicely spaced so I get them all marked out and then I can drill some pilot holes. As the screw is going to be visible, I've got some nice little brass ones to use for this. I've just got to get this protective film taken off while trying not to look at the camera. I get it positioned and I start at the top of the curve and get it screwed on and it conforms to this curve really easily. So that I can get it attached to the base, I get a couple of brass mirror plates installed and then it's back out to the garage with it. It can be slid over the pulley. I mark out where the holes need to go and drill some pilot holes. Then I can get it attached with a couple of brass screws 
and therefore it'll be easily removable if I ever need to get to the belt. So I'd already got the blades installed, but I hadn't set them properly. So I'm gonna do that now. And I have these jigs that make setting them precisely really easily. I'll put a link to them down below on the tools I use page. When I'm happy with their position, I can then get them tightened down. The tables can now be moved back into place, locked down, and this bit on the fence pushed down to them. Now, the garage is not that well sealed, so I want to protect this from rust. So I apply a coat of some badger wax and then buff it all off. This should protect it from rust and help bits of wood slide nicely over it. So this had a nice old switch on it. The trouble is the stop button was missing. So every month I do a little video just for my patrons and I ask them, does anyone have a 3D printer? And I got a load of responses and offers to help. So a couple of them are working on make designing and printing me a new button. So I haven't got it yet. So in the meantime, I've just got a more modern NVR switch that I'm gonna stick on. And what I've done is I've knocked up a little wooden bracket so I'm going to get it attached to that. So that's it all done and it works great. It's got a really powerful motor that runs really smoothly and quietly. Uh, the dust collection port actually works really quite well. So very pleased with it. Now I don't really need another planer, but in here I've got an old table saw and band saw, so it will work nicely with those. And I've almost got a second workshop with this, but with vintage tools, which is quite cool. I've just got to keep stop buying more, but that's easier said than done. So, thank you very much for watching this series. Thank you to my patrons, and please subscribe for more videos. Mm -hmm.